when God blesses you, he blesses you fitting to a king. He blesses you because you are royalty. He blesses you over and above and exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can talk about when God bless you. Hallelujah. Be magnified in this your holy temple in this your holy place we will, we will rise to science high, high to praise and glory.
because of who you are, you're worthy to be honored and praised today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you. Begin to open your mouth and speak. Speak to the Lord, the Lord God. Praise his name. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you. Just tell us, Lord, I love you. I love you because you woke me up this morning, Lord God. I love you because I'm sound in my mind this morning, Lord God. And Lord God, I love you because I can still clap my hands. I can still open up my mouth and give you praise. I can still say, Lord God, you are great and mighty and you are worthy, 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 worthy. So my heart cry out to you today, Lord God, when I think about your goodness and all you've done for me. My heart cry out hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just love you this morning, Lord God. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored. You're worthy, Lord God. And so we lift our hands, oh God, in total adoration unto your name, Lord God, today. We bless you as the people in this house this morning. Come and tabernacle with us today, Holy Spirit. Come and tabernacle in this place. Come and tackle among your people today. And so, Father God, as we just tell you how much we love you, we're reminded today, Lord God, how when we begin to cry out unto the Lord, you always come and you always hear our cry. And so we say to you today, Lord God, that we've come today just casting our cares upon you, casting our hearts toward you, we ask you to search us, Lord God, today. Make us worthy, Lord God, to lift our hands in the sanctuary and to praise you and to glorify you today. We come because he's a God who hears and answers prayer. He's a God who told us to come boldly before the throne of grace. And so this morning, Father God, we come as a people. We come with our hearts turned heavenward. We come with a heart of thanksgiving unto you oh god jehovah jehovah jireh jehovah nisi jehovah shalom jehovah we come before you this morning you are great and mighty and mighty and mighty and mighty and mighty and mighty is your name you are all powerful you sit high but you look low you're transcendent but you're among your people Lord God, we thank you because your majesty, your onion, your dominion. Lord God, we thank you because yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And so this morning, Lord God, you bid us to come. So we come this morning with our hearts turned heavenward. We come this morning, Lord God, with a broken and a contrite heart. Because you said if we come broken and contrite before you, you will not cast us out. And so, Lord God, we ask that you'd move. Holy Spirit, from heart to heart, search us, Lord God. See if there be any wicked ways in us, Lord God. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. And so this morning, we've come to give you glory. We've come to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did on Calvary's cross just for us. Thank you that you didn't stay in the grave. Thank you that you're seated on the right hand of the Father right now, making intercession on behalf of your children. And so, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this house. You are welcome in our hearts. You are welcome in our, ha- in our lives. Take full control. We bring Bethel before you this morning. We bring the membership here, Lord God. Help us not to get weary in well-doing. Help us not to slack our ride in this season. But, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to know what it is that you require for us in this new normal. We pray, Lord God, for those who are sick and shut in. We pray for those, Lord God, who are at home, Lord God, and they are viewing live this morning. And then those, Lord God, who bold, Lord God, to come into your sanctuary. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, because we know that you have, Lord God, a miracle in store for them today. And so we ask you you, that you will show yourself strong. Magnify your power, Lord God. Magnify your glory, Lord God. And so that the earth will see and know people everywhere, Lord God, will know that you are God and beside you there is none other. 
just like you did the showdown on Mount Carmel with Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Lord God, show up, show out in our country today, Lord God. Let people see you, Lord God, and then they will cry out, I yield, I yield, I can no longer live in sin. We pray, Lord God, for household salvation. We pray, Lord God, for those families, Lord God, that are going through discord right now. We speak peace into those homes in the name of Jesus. We pray for family altars to be reestablished in our homes, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we would do is give you thanks and give you glory for a new day, Lord God. And then, Father God, we pray that even so many families, Lord God, they're experiencing sickness, Lord God, and distress. We recognize that there's another surge with this COVID-19. But, Father God, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so we rebuke fear from households in the name of Jesus. And we pray that people would walk in wisdom, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that they would recognize, Lord God, that the blood of Jesus covers and the blood of Jesus protects. But also, Lord God, that our people will perish because of the lack of knowledge. And so, Father God, we pray that we would walk in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now, Father, we present, Lord God, all our, our leaders in this country before you. Our Prime Minister, his cabinet, the Senate, Lord God, those who lead, Lord God, in the healthcare industry, Lord God. We present them before you. We speak fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Lord God, help them, Lord God, to cry out to you and to listen to what it is that you would speak concerning, Lord God, your people. We pray, Lord God, for Bethel now, Lord God. We present your manservant before you. We thank you for the fresh rhema, Lord God, that will come from his spirit on today because there's an anointing, Lord God, that you're resting upon him even now. Give him a mantle, Lord God, for this assignment, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you're healing everything that concerns him. Bless his helpmate, Lord God. Anoint her fresh right now, Lord God. Bless his sons right now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all his footsteps and purpose being established even now, Lord God. And even as you bless this family, Lord God, bless all the families of Bethel, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because the family that prays together stays together. Unite us with cause of love that cannot be broken asunder. We present every auxiliary before you right now in the name of Jesus. We present, Lord God, every leader of every auxiliary in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that our footsteps will be quickened in this season, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to continue to pursue the assignment that you've given us, Lord God, to minister effectively unto your people. Lord God, we thank you for the hearts that are being mended this morning. We thank you for the bowed down heads being lifted up. We thank you for the sick bodies being healed. Oh God, show off among your people, Lord God. Now God, bless this service. Bless our praise team, our musicians, our ushers, our packing attendants, Lord God. All those who partake today, Lord God. And Father, when you speak, we'll listen. When you speak, we'll move. When you speak, Lord God, we'll say yes. So bless us now, Lord God. And let us not disappoint you, but let us be faithful to carry out your kingdom business here on earth. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory because we believe, Lord God, that you've heard and you will answer in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And the people of God say, and the people of God say, come on, clap your hands. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me.
of God. Today we are streaming live from the oldest Baptist church in the Bahamas and the oldest continuing Baptist congregation in the Caribbean. Bethel is pastored by a servant of God, Timothy Stewart by name, and along with the leadership and membership of Bethel, we say a warm Hello to those of you who are watching and perhaps listening at home, to our members, to our supporters and followers. We say today is a good day to serve the Lord. This is the 19th day of July, the third Sunday, as we move swiftly towards the end. We do not know what tomorrow holds. But we know that 2020 so far has been a very eventful year. But God is in charge. God is in control. To those of you who are home, I am going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And we are going to the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Psalm 139. The first 14 verses of Psalm 139 will be considered. I will read every verse. The congregation will read every other verse. We ask you now to join with us 
Psalm 139, it speaks of the everlasting presence and power of God. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Together I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and shall be glad in this day. This hymn certainly provides an opportunity for us to raise our voices in song. That's the reason why we come here today to worship him. Let's sing together. Oh, worship a king, all glorious above, and gratefully sing his power and his love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of his might and sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space. His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form, and the dark is his path on the wings of the storm. The earth with its store of wonders untold, almighty thy power and of all hath established it fast by our angeless decree and round it hath cast like a mantle the sea thy bountiful care what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it rolls in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust 
and feeble as frail in thee do we trust but for thee to fail thy mercies how tender how firm to them our maker defender redeemer and a friend i'm just reminded of something my son told me this morning and as we go through an experience in our own lives in my family he said daddy one thing i want you to remember don't look at the things that you see continue just to praise him this is my son telling me this morning and so as we look at that fifth voice he says he's our maker he's our defender he's our healer he's our friend and so if we continue to look to jesus who's the author and finisher of our faith every single situation that we're going through will be solved in the name of jesus and we call it done right now and so as we sing this last verse O oh Lord of all might, how boundless thy love, where angels delight. And I'm looking for the other words. To him thee above, the humbler creation, thou feeble they lay, though feeble they lay, with true adoration shall sing to thy praise. And we're reminded that we should continue to sing and glorify him no matter what we're going through. Let's sing to the honor and glory of God and continue to praise Him. O oh Lord of all the might, how boundless Thy love while angels Delight to him above the humbler creation of feeble delight with true adoration shall sing to thy praise. Everything that I breath. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let us glorify his name. Don't you love God today? Hasn't he been good? Hasn't he been merciful? Hasn't he been kind? Hasn't he been a provider, protector? Oh, how I love God. And so I thank God. So let's welcome and let's continue to usher in the presence of God. I welcome you today that you will not be mindful of who is sitting on the side of you or what your condition is today or how you came in here but know that you promise not to leave here the same amen that when the word is spoken you will receive it and you will run with it and you will ask God that hey this weight that is on me I fling it off today we said cast every care upon him because he cares for us so no one should be leaving here defeated. No one should be leaving here disappointed. No one should be leaving here discouraged, amen? Y'all faces don't look like that to me. Y'all look a little disappointed. After we have sung and we have said, oh, how we love you, God. Oh, how we appreciate you because of who he is. Come on, y'all faces don't look like it. Even though you, your mind might be on something what happening, come on, you need... You need to fake it till you make it. You need to believe that God is able today. And so we welcome in the spirit of encouragement. We welcome in the spirit of joyfulness. And we leave every, every spirit of discouragement here. We take that, we cast it out into the graveyard where it needs to go. Because he is life. He is gracious. He is merciful unto his people. And so we welcome you into Bethel. This is the house of God, is it not? And we know that God is here. We thank him for his presence. And we know that he is able to do a great work inside of you. So when you hear the word, you know what? You know one thing? I ain't gonna lie to y'all. 
pastor preaching up in here every Sunday. A word, let me tell you something, the revelation of it, that if you grab onto it, that'll take you to another Sunday. So today, today I know some of y'all, you know, we just here because church open and we come to church, but no, no, baby, there's a new day on today. COVID-19 has woken all of us up. It's a new day. So today, when Pastor Stuart come and he's standing and he de begin to declare the word, you need to welcome that into your spirit. You need to take what you cut from that, all the meat, the bones, the broth, everything. You take it and you go with it and you are obedient to the word today. Because if you're not obedient to the word, you're going to stay in the same situation that you find yourself. And then you declare that you are a child of God. Oh, but the child, of, the children of the Most High God are victorious. They are mighty. They're doing great and wonderful things in his name, even in this COVID season. Amen. So be, be welcome today. But welcome, Holy Ghost. Welcome to take that word and be welcome to do what it is that God has called you to do. Amen. Come on, let's bless God. Let's magnify his name. Hallelujah. Storehouse continues its feeding program by providing food boxes to those in need. If you would like to support this mission initiative, please call our church office at 1-242-323-5000. As you have been blessed by the Lord, we encourage you to be a blessing to someone today. The Progressive National Baptist Convention's 59th Annual Session will be held virtually this year on the Zoom platform, beginning Monday, August 3rd to Friday, August 7th. If you are interested in registering for this historic 59th Annual Session, please contact the church's office at 1-242-323-5000 or visit www.pnbc.org for more information. Our president, Rev. Dr. Timothy Stewart, pastor of Bethel Baptist Church, Nassau, Bahamas, thanks you for your support. God bless. The historic Bethel Baptist Church will celebrate its 230th anniversary service with a live stream broadcast Sunday, August 2nd at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. at www.historicbethelbaptist.org. Our speaker for this occasion is a son of Bethel, Rev. Melvin Grant, pastor the Remnant Tabernacle of Praise. We invite our radio congregation, viewing audience around the world, and the nation at large to celebrate with us as we sing the songs of Zion, dance like David danced, and preach the unadulterated, life-transforming Word of God. 
Also, don't forget to celebrate with us next Sunday at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. at www.historicbethelbaptist.org. God's got a blessing just for you. We want to say a special anniversary greeting, a shout out to those who are celebrating anniversaries. We are so glad that you've tuned in and those who have celebrated birthdays. God bless each of you indeed. It is a gift to be alive. And finally, we want to send out sincere condolences to those families who have lost loved ones in recent times. We want you to know that we are praying for you and we are asking that God provides the comfort and the strength that you need during this time. We thank you so much for joining us and we pray that God would bless you with his choices. Blessings on this day. God bless you. If you would like to contact the church, please send us an email at info at bbc1790.org or you can send an inquiry to our website to the button that says contact us. If you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account our main branch account, the account number 2895688, or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 157, account number 1350001435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account, a bank-to-bank -bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution, or over-the-counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over-the-counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button that will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you. him, just to worship him. 
I tell people if you can go to the trouble to get up in the morning and bathe and put on your clothes, you might as well worship. You know, you might as well worship. You might as well give him some praise. And so this morning we're excited about the word that the Spirit of the Lord is going to speak through our pastor, his servant this morning. How many people know that the anointing makes a difference? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got some folk. They can preach. You know, they can say a good word, but it's nothing like the anointing. And this morning, we are so grateful that God has given us an anointed vessel. Uh, one who has been proven, tried, and tested. You know, faithful to the call no matter what. Sick, weary, tired, but dependent on the Spirit of the Lord. And so, Pastor, this morning, we decree and we declare. Anybody with me this morning? Come on, you got to get there with me. You got to get there with me. That there's a fresh anointing resting today. There's a new mantle for this assignment. Last week was for last week. Tell somebody there's a new one today. Yeah, I need fresh manna. Anybody need fresh manna? Yeah, you got to act like you need it. See, when you, when, you, when, you, when you pull on heaven, heaven will then release to you thy kingdom come on earth, eh? As it is in heaven. And so we decree and declare over the man serving this morning God's chosen vessel for this time and for Bethel, lo, these almost 38 years. None other than our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Stewart, the president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, USA. Our pastor, our beloved, a beloved son. We just give God thanks for him. And so if you expect it from God this morning, clap one more time for, for him, for the word, for the anointing, for the spirit. Right after our praise team would come at this election, the next voice for this hour would be none other than our pastor, Pastor Stewart. God bless it. Sanctuary, praise him, praise him. God, be 
Let's give God another round of applause for our praise team. Continue to let the Lord use you in your song. Join me now in the reading of God's word. Second Samuel 9, chapter 9. And we will begin reading from verse 1, 2 Samuel. I will read from the New Living um, Version. One day, David asked, is there one or is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He summoned a man named Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba, the king asked. Yes, sir, I am, Ziba replied. The king then asked him, Is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, Yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. In Lodabar, Ziba told him, at the home of Mika, son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Mika's home. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David said, Greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, 
I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Fizbesheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog, a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for your master's household. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will eat here at my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba replied, yes, my lord, the king. I am your servant, and I will do that, I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table, like one of the king's own sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. From then on, all the members of Zeba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. My brothers and sisters, I believe that God has directed us to this particular story, this experience. in order for us to understand and appreciate that there is nothing God can do. I don't, I don't care how things look. I don't care what the circumstances may be. God is able. And, and God will carry you through. Songwriter said, you can depend on God. You can depend on him. This morning, this morning, 
David has ascended the throne. Finally. And God has given him favor so much so that he has begun the process of invading and expanding his territory. The empire. But the Bible says, one day, one day, David paused from the governance of the nation David paused from the battles he was raging in order to recall a promise that he had made. And so he says one day, is there anyone in Saul's family that I can do God's kindness to? Because of Jonathan's sin. This speaks this morning about the power of relationships, of the significance and the importance of building right, proper, godly relationships. You see, first, David had a relationship with God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And because he had this relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God ordered his steps. God ordered his step from a little shepherd boy to the palace in Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, there's nothing impossible with God. There's nothing. Not only did he have a relationship with God, but he had, or oh, before I go there, so I want to just emphasize this morning before I go to that other emphasis, that it is important, my brothers and sisters, to have good relationships. Build the relationship with your family. Build the relationship with your family. Do not allow anything or any problem to prevent you from building and developing the kind of relationship with your family because you don't know you do not know which member of your family will come to your rescue you don't know 
what need you would have that that same family member that you are not on speaking terms with, that you have a problem with, might be able to come to your assistance. Not only build the relationship with your family, but build the relationship with on the job. Too many of us allow the workplace to be places where we cannot have good, healthy, productive, sound relationships. Build a relationship with the people on the job. In other words, this relationship that David had with God was based on the love of God. So in order for the relationship in the family to succeed and the relationship with on the job to succeed and the relationship with the community to succeed and, and the, 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 the relationship with whomever to succeed, it has to be predicated and based and sourced in the love of God. It has to be. For Jonathan's Is there anyone you can think of you can help for somebody else's sake? Jonathan is already dead and gone. But now, because of David's relationship with God and with Jonathan, He's now inquiring who else he can bless. Now that he's in a position. Now that God has been faithful. Now that God has fulfilled his promise. He wants to extend kindness. And you know something, Bethel and to the Bahamas, we will cope and tolerate and thrive through this pandemic more effectively if we are able to build the right relationships. And if we are able to reach out and extend and help others who may be less fortunate than we are. Even if it ain't for their sake. Bahamians normally say, if I had a mind. Yeah, I, I know you wouldn't do it if you had the mind, but, 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 but because of the sake of, of, of someone who has been a blessing in your life, someone who has come to your rescue in your time of need, someone, someone, you now want to be a blessing during this very, very difficult and dangerous hour. And so David inquired and investigated and they told him that one of Saul's servants, Ziba, 
is able to assist him with the answer that he wants. So he called Ziba. God will always have somebody. God will always have somebody strategically placed just to work on your behalf. Huh? No, nobody around who can help but, 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 but Ziba, the servant. Saul's servant. He asked Ziba, he said, Ziba, is there anyone in Saul's family still alive? And Ziba said, yes. He says, he has a son. He has a son. And his son is crippled in both feet. And so he is in a place called Lodabar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is away from Gen Jerusalem. Yeah. He, is, he is away from all of the resources. He, he is away from what's going on in the capital. And he says, go get him. Go get him. And so the Bible says that Mephibosheth shows up. And when he showed up. He bowed low in respect to David. And David told him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. My brothers and my sisters, the word this morning is Fear not. I know times are uncertain. I know the struggles are real. I, I know the difficulties are surmounting and intensifying. But don't be afraid. David says, don't be afraid. The king says, don't be afraid. So he says, I want to show you kindness. I want to show you kindness. I want to show you kindness to fulfill a promise I made to your father. How is it that this relationship got so important? Important and so strong. Well, you see, when Jonathan and David were together one day, David was in fear for his life because of Saul, who was king at that time. Jonathan wanted to know what was disturbing David. And David told him that your father is out to kill me. Jonathan said, not you. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan said, that can't be so. Well, anyhow, the situation was that they formed a pack. They formed an agreement. They formed that they would assist one another so that no harm 
will come to David. And Jonathan said, don't worry about the situation. Everything my father does, he discloses to me. He said, and once he discloses to me, I will warn you. And the Bible says that Jonathan once went one step further and said, David, I want you to promise me this. He says, because if I am king, live to be king, I will look out for your family. And he says, but if these battles that my father is fighting, see, he knew that the Lord was not with Saul. He, he knew, and so he knew that one of these battles, Saul was going to be destroyed. But he says, if I am destroyed with my father in battle as a result of fighting by his side, he said, I want you to take care of my family. Don't forget my family. Yeah. And so now, David is fulfilling that, that promise. And so my brothers and sisters, David said to Mephibosheth, Say now, Mephibosheth, I'm going to do two things for you. The first thing I am going to do for you is going to be, I'm going to give you all of the property that your father possessed. All of the property. So, so now he is crippled. He's by himself. And, but, but, but at this point now, his total circumstances have changed because the king is now saying, everything that your grandfather, I said father, but no grandfather, owned, I'm going to give to you. I'm going to tell you the significance of that. David the king is saying everything the former king owned is now yours. I know you are crippled in both feet. I know that you are unable to take care of yourself. I, I know that you cannot operate independently. But let me tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to, everything the king owns is yours. My God from Zion. When God blesses you, he blesses you fitting to a king. He blesses you because you are royalty. He blesses you over and above and exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can talk about when God bless you. He said, I'm not even going to give you what your father owned. Who was the prince? I can give you everything your grandfather owned. 
Who is the king? And then secondly, he says, come here, Zeba. This Zebo is the servant of the grandfather, Saul. He was his servant. And the Bible says Zeba had 15 sons. 15 sons. And 20 servants and so he said to Zeba now you your sons and your servants will serve Mephibosheth you will administrate all of his Assets and, and all of, of, of his revenue, you, you will ensure that he makes a profit. You, you will farm his land. You, you will whack his land. With, and, and, and whatever profits he gets, you will see to it that they are secured for him. What a mighty God we serve. Now, Mephibosheth not only has wealth, but he has the administrative help. He has all of the means from which to produce in a vast way what he has been provided for. And so Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth Seth said what did I have done to deserve all this? What, what, what have I done to deserve all of this? David said, because of your father, because of your father. And so, my brothers, the Bible closed by saying, the story closed by saying, that Mephibosheth had a son. His name was Michael. And that's saying that God will not only take care of you, God will not only adequately supply for your generation, but if you put your trust, if you put your confidence in the promises of a living God, God will take care of you from generation to generation. If you trust, never doubt. God, Bethel, people of God will surely bring you out. God bless you. We received some instructions today from the Lord. The first one that I remember is that we ought to build relationships. Amen. Yeah. You remember that? And that that relationship should be built based on godly principles. You remember all of that? Yes. So that's instructions. That's what we have been commanded by the Lord through this message to do that at home, to do that on the job, to do that everywhere. But we also heard how God, because of his 
promises has blessed us. So we ask ourselves the questions as every head is bowed and eyes are closed at this time. As we contemplate what God is saying to us, what did we do to deserve this blessing? What did me, your servant, do to deserve all of this goodness and this kindness that God has given unto us? And the next question we ask, and that's the whole bringing it together with the relationship. What are we going to do with the fact that we've been so blessed by God? In terms of helping somebody else, in terms of showing kindness to somebody else, showing love to somebody else, in terms of being good to somebody else. That's our instruction today. If I can say this in a way that isn't necessarily going to sound so spiritual, but going to sound as if God is speaking to us and saying, when we walk out of this place here today, we know what we have to do. If I can say that in a way that doesn't sound spiritual, but sounds like instructions that we have received in this message today, let's go there and let's build those godly relationships. Because we don't know who is going to help us in our time of need. Now there's another word that we received today that we ought not to be fearful that no matter what our situation is, no matter what our circumstances are, maybe we have two legs that are just not working. We can't provide for ourselves right now. At least we think we can't. God is going to provide for us. Amen? And so the, I want to take this moment right now to ask a question. That if there is anyone in this room here today, anyone in this church here today, right now, that you're fearful, you are concerned, you don't know which way to turn, you don't know what's going to happen to you. And now that you know that God through Jesus Christ will take care of your needs, you want to give your life to him right now. You want to make a pact with him. Just as Jonathan and David made a pact with each other. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ right now. If that's you right now, that's your commitment, that's where you are, and that's what you want to do right now. I want you to just raise your hand right now. Amen. I see that hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Let's celebrate those persons who decide, those persons who decided that they want to be a part of God's family. We thank you, Lord. So what we want to do right now is say a prayer. And we want you to repeat these words, very simple words. As you make that decision, you've made that decision and now you're going to enter into a relationship first with God. And then you're going to follow that instruction that we receive from the word today. To have that same type of relationship with others. Let us all repeat these simple words. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of all of my sins. I am so sorry for all the wrong things that I have done. For allowing myself to follow the advice of bad company and for being in the wrong places that I should not be. Now cleanse me today, wash me today, and make me clean in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now what I want to do is just say a prayer for us all, collectively. If we would just continue to bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this word, this word, these words of instructions today. God, help us to follow it. Help us to follow it to the T. 
Because we know that by following your word, O oh Lord God, that there is something that's at the end of that instruction. It's a closer walk with you, O oh God. It's a closer relationship with you, O oh God. We understand that it's also blessings that will come from you, O oh God. But our mind is on our relationship. We just want so much more of you, O oh God. Help us, O oh Lord God, to build godly relationships. Help us to be the examples that we ought to be, O oh God, for you. To do the things that are right. To show kindness to other people, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to be sacrificial in our love for one another. Thank you, Lord God. Be with us. Help us, O oh Lord God. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his radiant and bless his adorable countenance upon you. Give you his peace henceforth now and forevermore. Let the people of God say, Amen. Say it's all right, say it's all right, say it's all right, it's all right, say it's all right, praise the Lord, cause it's all right, oh, it's all right, oh, when you wake up early in the morning, feeling sad and so confused. Oh, you got to know there's a God above who made a way out for you. And he's telling you it's all right. It's all right. I say it's all right. I say it's all right. Say a little prayer. I say it's all right. Oh, it's all right. I say it's all right. It's all right. I say it's all right. It's all right. Say, it's all right, say a little prayer, cause it's all right, oh, it's all right. Oh, when you wake up early in the morning, feeling sad and so confused, oh, you gotta know there's a God above who made a way out for you, and he's telling you it's all right, it's all right, cause say, it's all right. It's all right, read his holy word, cause it's all right, oh, it's all right, I say it's all right, mm -hmm. I say it's all right, mm -hmm. it's all right, read his holy word, cause it's all right, oh, it's all right. Well, when you wake up early in the morning, feeling sad and so confused. Oh, you gotta know there's a God above who made a way out for you, and He's telling you it's all right. I say it's all right. Oh, it's all right. Give the Lord a chance, cause it's all right. Oh, it's all. Right.